Yeah, okay. So this uh, wheel, like you are speaking about, uh, that make you do something that you don't want to do. So this is coming from the subconscious, like you say. So it's hiding in our traumas. So where this subconscious is created or, I mean, where is this wheel, how this wheel can move us around, you know, it's, this is really weird, you know, because if we have the divine help and we have this, so, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't get it. Why the divine is not going inside the subconscious? Um, so I think uh, just for the matter of play, just for a, a, in play, for example, what do you do? You know, you become, uh, for example, if I am an actor and I have to play a role of, uh, say, a hero or a villain or a neutral character. In that play, role play, I would not become all the roles. I would only be the one character that I am playing, which is say the villain or the hero or the neutral character, right? So why would I hide all the other roles which I can play? I can be the heroine, I can be the hero alongside being the villain. But why am I not doing that? For the purpose of play. So I think it's in gradation because when, you know, when we hide something, like we do treasure hunt, we hide something first, you know, and then we try to find it. Now the person who hides it should not tell the person who is going to find where I have actually hidden the stuff. Otherwise there is no fun. <laughs> so I feel it's like, you know, again, a large picture, but what appears to me is as mother also says, it's the, it's for the sake of adventure that all the souls plunged into this darkness and said, okay, we will, you know, try to find the light and explore out of ignorance. We will find wisdom and knowledge. Why? Why am I so sure? Because I am the light. We are all the light. So the souls are sure, they have a certitude that if I plunge into darkness, you know, nothing can happen to me and I will rise out and take the darkness towards light. So I think it's the purpose of play that slowly only the subconscious opens up to us. And right now we are ruled by the subconscious rather than knowing the subconscious. Why? Because in degrees we shed layers of ignorance. Just like that, we don't wake up, you know, it's like in degrees, we keep on waking up, waking up, waking up, one realization after another, one light after another light. So and why? Because it's, it's fun. <laughs> For those of us are, who are on the path, you know, it's, it's fun to uh, discover hidden parts in us. So I feel that there is a part of this fun adventure element, which mother also talks about along with you know all the horrible nightmares that we create being the ego consciousness which instead of adventure turns into something really opposite <laughs> but i think that's part of the game we don't have to stay there all the time and uh, yet you know it's fun and adventurous when we first don't know and then we suddenly realize oh but now i know but then again we realize now i don't again know you know so because there are so many degrees so I think an element of fun and divine humor, as they say, that too. Yeah, Taru, would you like to add anything? Yeah, beautifully explained. Thank you. It's very, always a learning experience to hear you talk. I want to say that more and more I have been realizing, you know, addressing Claudia's question that what I think as a good happening could actually be really bad for me. And what I think as a bad thing could really be the miracle I had been praying for, not knowing that I've been praying for it. Just to give an example, say I feel suffocated, right, in my family or in my relationship. And but I don't know what to do. You know, my parents are in a society, they live in a family, I have been given a certain set of values and subconsciously consciously or consciously with the media and everything, I've been told that this is how you live life. 
you know, first you study, then you go for graduation, then you get married, then you have a child, then you have a house. In the sense, all the plan is totally laid out for me. And yet, there's something in me which is not happy. It feels that, you know, I'm doing everything by the book, maybe. And yet, I can't breathe, you know, like I can't breathe superficially, but there's something in me which is not breathing right. And then say something like, say a near-death experience happens or a, you know, a cancer happens or something drastic happens, which after which it's impossible to stay in that situation like that. You have to change. But because the resistance and the power of the pattern and the influence of a conditioning is so strong that I cannot move. It's not for the flap that I say, oh my God, you know, you hurt me. God is hurting me. He's unkind. He's paining me. Why do I only have to suffer? You know, why is my life full of misery? And the answer is because he loves you. And he wants you to say, see that this is not it. You know, this is not it. You also are not happy. But you know, it's very strange and I see that in me and around me that I might not be happy in a certain situation or in certain situations. But if somebody asks me that, hey, are you happy? Why are you doing this? Surprisingly, I would say, I'm fine. Everything is all right. I don't admit it even to myself. The things are not okay. So, and that is why these wake up calls are needed, which seem like tragedies in human life. But you know, these tragedies I feel are the times when, you know, the course is changed. That I'm falling, 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 suddenly something happens, and I realize, oh my God, I'm falling. I, and I have the courage. So, these tragedies help me connect with the source of courage. And help me move in a direction which is actually very auspicious for me. So seemingly, it seems like a bad thing. You know, again, like how Rumi says that if you cry out at every rub, you know, how will you be polished, my dear? Something like I'm paraphrasing. And uh, in Sri Aurobindo, right? Like uh, pain is a hammer of God, which is there to, you know, break the dead resistance which you have. So again, just reflect, just accepting maybe even for a few moments for this reflection. And if we look at our lives, so the moments where I felt helpless, where I felt suffering, where I like cried in darkness, did not this dawn came after that. You know, some dawn, some dawning, some newness. It's just very apparent if we look at it. But somehow, because there is so much resistance as a society towards pain, towards feeling helpless, that we just want to run away and want to be comfortable, comfortable. You know, we feel that if we are comfortable, then we'll get it. But somehow comfort puts us into lethargy and monotony and just it makes us falsely believe that things are okay and this is it. This is enough for me. This is enough for me. I think in Bhagavad Gita, there is this quote that, you know, the issue is not that we don't want larger goals. But the issue is that we keep getting satisfied with, you know, the lesser goals which are easily accomplished, which might mean nothing. But at least we have this false sense of, okay, I can get this. You know, this is doable. This is doable. That I keep forgetting that that's not why I am here. Could it be? You know, don't know where I came from. Don't know one, where I'll go once I drop the body. And all these dramas that I'm doing, this stress, this worry, this expectation, this demand. It cannot be that this is the reason. Right? There has to be more. Very logical. If we even look at the basic of it, it doesn't need philosophy or mysticism. Just plain logic that I don't know. And among so many other 500 things I don't know, probably this I don't know is something that if I know I could do something that would help me, right? That would show 
more shed more light because the other i don't know just keep me you know jumping from here and there they promise me satisfaction completion joy that i never seem to get and if i get it's very temporary i'm sorry very long reflection yeah i think one thing which also uh, comes to me uh, again referring to the question uh, claudia that you posed that there is a divine will and then we have our own will i think this is uh, this seems like this but actually it's just one will <laughs> i think it just in our ignorance it seems like i am willing something else and the divine is willing something else because see what am i willing even if i want a relationship to work what really truly am i willing i am willing for myself true happiness but that's a different matter that in my ignorance i don't know that true happiness won't come by possessing a person so i am wishing so imagine that somebody says today that if you enter into a relationship and have a person next to you you will suffer very badly would i still want that relationship i would not you know why i want that relationship in the very first place is because it is it promises me satisfaction contentment and happiness but in my ignorance what i do is i possess try to possess the person thinking that if i possess the person i will have true happiness but that never 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 happens it can't happen and the divine is also willing the same for each one of us which is true and lasting happiness <laughs> how can how can it come it can come by reclaiming my inner kingdom it can come by knowing who i truly am and as taru was sharing that all the seeming tragedies traumas that happen in our life don't they push us forward to knowing who we truly are There's so much pain so much helplessness now what to do what to do where to look then we have to look within we have to go to a master we have to go to a guru why because so much pain and turmoil so ultimately either you can say my will divine will it doesn't matter because there is only one will in action there are no two wills because there are no two there is only one and out of that one the whole manifestation is created so the will is only one one also it's just in our ignorance that it appears that there are two wills one is divine will and the other one is mine you know and that's why we have to use what mother says you know let thy will be done not mine when we read this sentence it appears that there are two wills thy will and my will <laughs> but actually the both the wills want true happiness true contentment in my ignorance i don't know which way to go so i think this is the way i am going to have happiness but the divine corrects the course through seeming tragedies and you know what taru was elaborating upon and then we realize oh you know thank god for that tragedy because otherwise left to myself i would have never really turned within so there is i think uh, you know when you were asking it appears like there are two wills but i think when we reflect we can see that there is only one will and the the will of the ego the limited self it just works in ignorance so in my ignorance i don't know what is the right way to get true happiness all i want is true and lasting happiness and that's what the divine also wants for all of us <laughs> so it's the same will just that because of this layer of the ego the curtain of the ego you know the light that is coming through that curtain it gets distorted because the it's a thick curtain so it distorts the initial will 